Hello everyone, my name is Infinity and this is Magnetize Yourself, where we talk about life, love, spirituality, and of course the law of attraction. In today's video, we're going to be diving deep into twin flame stages. That is all we're going to be discussing and focusing on in this video because I feel like whenever I talk about twin flame stages, I'm always talking about it in connection with something else like twin flame signs. But in this video, I really just want to focus on the general pattern that emerges within twin flame relationships collectively. And I specifically say the general pattern because one important thing to know about these twin flame stages is they're not cut and dry by any means. These aren't like signs that you have to experience. You don't have to experience every single stage that I'm sharing with you. All I'm sharing through this video is a pattern. So this is a series of experiences, shared experiences that twin flames tend to go through collectively within their individual relationships. And I also do want to say, and this is a really weird kind of concept, but you may not go through these stages quite chronologically. So yes, some of these stages tend to happen in a certain order. But especially when we get into the later stages I'll share with you, stages nearing that physical reunion and shared purpose you develop within a twin flame connection, you can often go back and forth. I know that sometimes people get confused because they're like, oh, I'm experiencing a lot of outer turmoil. I'm experiencing this ego death, but then I'm also in this running and chasing phase. and. The thing about these stages is although I'm going to share them in a kind of chronological order, they don't always happen in this exact order. You can actually move forward to kind of one stage, move back into another one. So just take whatever resonates from this video and really just my hope through sharing these stages is to bring out a pattern that you can then use to navigate or at the very least better understand why these things are happening to you. I'm mostly focusing on the confusing chaotic experiences that tend to happen within each of these stages to help you attach meaning to the things that you've experienced that I'm sure many other people in your life don't understand. But before I get into this video, I just want to share with you my soul passion project and website Sound and Soulful. So for those of you who don't know, on this website, I've created a library of over 100 subliminal affirmations tracks for all areas of life. So what are subliminals? Subliminals are meditation tracks that contain binaural beat frequencies and other soothing meditation sounds. But the key about these meditations that make them so different and so powerful is that they also include unconscious affirmations. What I mean by unconscious is that while you're listening, your conscious mind won't actually be able to hear the spoken messages because usually they're played at a low volume and embedded within these other tones, frequencies, and sounds. But your subconscious mind is the part of the mind that absorbs everything, even the things that the conscious mind doesn't see or hear. And by playing these affirmations in a way that bypasses the conscious mind, we can then deeply impact the subconscious mind, which research has shown is actually a thousand times more powerful than our conscious thinking mind. So just to share some personal experience, I tried using the law of attraction for years and saw very little and very slow results until I started meditating with subliminals. Subliminals truly changed my life because they allowed me to access and shift these negative subconscious thoughts that were stored in the unconscious parts of my brain. So within just a few weeks of listening to subliminals, I saw drastic changes in my confidence, my mood, my energy levels, and very soon in the things that manifested in my life. By listening to subliminals, I manifested union within my twin flame relationship. I lost 20 pounds. 
I became the healthiest, best, most confident version of myself. I manifested my dream career and really so much more. I could just go on and on about how subliminals have helped me create so much change in my life. So on my member website, I've created subliminals for all areas of life, including appearance, body changes, mood shifts like confidence, happiness, manifesting a specific person or certain business goals, material manifestations like money, a dream house, a dream career. And specifically for Twin Flames, I have several subliminals dedicated specifically to healing and shifting the balance of the Twin Flame connection. So to sign up for a seven day free trial on my website and access all of the subliminals I've created for free, you can check out the pinned comment and the description box under this video. Okay, so let's dive back into the twin flame stages, or really, if I was going to use a better term, I would just say the pattern of the twin flame connection, a general outline of what tends to happen between twin flames and what they tend to experience and in what order they experience these things. The first stage I would say is pretty standard. I would almost say for any twin flame relationship, and this is knowing that there is someone out there for you and you probably describe this person as the one as your soulmate because you may have not even been familiar with the term twin flames you just had this aching feeling inside of you that there was someone out there for you you may have had a kind of general idea of what this person looked like or in other cases you may have no idea what they look like you may have just had this feeling the best way I can describe it is I'll know it when I see it. Like you just knew that you would know this love when you encountered it, you would know this person. And you may have thought of this as a delusion. And in fact, many other people in your life may have written it off as fantasy. You may have even told yourself this was just a childhood fantasy. So you probably went on to try to date other people, unless I know in some cases, there are some of you who had such a strong knowing of this person and you were so spiritually awake even from a young age that you actually didn't even really date before meeting your twin flame. I will say this is not my experience. I had more of the standard story of knowing there was this person out there for me, this the one so to speak. And I tried to shove down this feeling because as I grew older, I used to be in a very strict religious institution that didn't really teach the idea of soul connections and so i thought the idea of soulmates was a fantasy so i did try to date other men in my life but i found this pervasive feeling of a longing through all of these relationships and i think that's the key for twin flames even if you did try to date other people before meeting or seeing your twin flame the first time you probably had this feeling of emptiness, this feeling of longing that just seemed to pervade every relationship you had with these other people. And maybe you thought your standards were too high, that you were delusional for just hoping or wishing for this person to just come into your life and sweep you off your feet. But really this was your soul knowing that this divine counterpart was out there for you. It was you sort of awakening to this amnesia of the soul, sort of remembering that you chose prior to this life to come together with this divine counterpart that you had come together with in lifetime after lifetime. It was you looking for this person in everyone that you met and never finding them and feeling this emptiness and longing as a result. So the next stage so to speak, of the twin flame connection is what I often hear called the glimpse or glimpsing your twin flame. This is a really interesting stage because sometimes this is actually physically meeting your twin flame, but sometimes it's much more mystical than that. Sometimes this could be having a dream where you meet with this energy, this person, they may manifest in the appearance of what your twin flame will look like, or they may actually look nothing like your twin flame in the dream, but the energy is the same. This is your twin flame energetically connecting with you through this dream. The purpose of this glimpse is to energetically prepare you for when you actually do meet your twin flame. 
because the twin flame physical meeting is so, so intense. I talk about this a lot and I don't want to get too sidetracked in this video, but when we, when we meet our twin flame in the physical, when we are within each other's auric field, which means we're within six feet of each other, we don't just meet physically, we really meet in a very visceral, energetic way. We go through what is called an energy merge, a soul merge, or an auric merge, depending on how you describe it. But during this time, we just exchange massive amounts of energy, massive amounts of, amounts of information. We download each other's memories. We often reawaken to past life experiences together. And you all know this if you've met your twin flame, it's part of why we experience so many mystical, seemingly unexplainable signs when we first meet. Well, prior to this very intense meeting, we do usually have what I call a touch point with our twin flame, a time where you either pass on the street, you're kind of in the same place and you notice each other, you meet very briefly, you see each other, you have a powerful dream meeting with each other, or it could be even something more mystical for you. I've spoken about this before and I would like to do in the future a full video on my own personal twin flame experience, but for me this glimpse was a very strange and mystical experience. I don't want to get too in depth because I don't want to get too off track from these stages, but for me I met my twin flame or a person with my twin flame's first name and I met my twin flame's energy, whether it was actually them in some kind of a parallel universe or it was some kind of living dream experience, I'm not really sure, but I met this person when I was young, when I was a preteen, who I remember their first name and we really connected, we were on a vacation together and we spent a few days kind of around each other connecting and I felt things for this person energetically, emotionally, mentally, physically that I have never experienced before and the only time I've experienced since is with my twin flame. So I am convinced this was either my twin flame in some way, it was some kind of strange living dream experience. But anyway, I ended up, we, we parted ways at the time and all I remembered was this person's first name but I could never forget about them. And later on, years and years later, I connected with my twin flame over social media and as we connected, we thought that we had met on this trip because we thought we'd been there at the same time, we both vaguely remembered each other, but then when he confirmed with his family, it turns out he wasn't actually in the same physical location that I was, he was there a different week, so there's no way that we actually physically could have met, but I know that this experience, whatever it was, however it happened for me, was my experience of glimpsing my twin flame prior to our physical meeting to prepare the way for this meeting to usually the purpose of this glimpse, whatever it is for you, is to make some kind of impression on your energy, to sort of nudge you in that direction, to remind you of the presence of your twin flame on this planet at this time and to remind you of your intentions to come together with this person. I do find for twin flames, although many twin flames will still date other people after this glimpse experience, usually this puts them on the path of a spiritual awakening and I say puts them on the path because meeting our twin flame, having an actual conscious physical meeting is usually what truly ignites this awakening in earnest. But for me, when I had this glimpse experience, I felt like there was this shift in my life after where dating other people started to become very difficult. I had trouble feeling as interested in other people, other partners, and I also was put on the path to my spiritual awakening. My life hadn't, or I should say my ego life, my life built on a false, inauthentic self hadn't yet fully crumbled, but it was on the path to ego death. I was on the path to this intense spiritual awakening that I would eventually experience. I do hope that this resonates with some of you. I know that I'm trying to put words to a highly indescribable and just very energy-based experience, but I know that some of you will connect with this, which is why I'm trying to share it in as many words and as many ways as possible. So the third stage of the twin flame connection is falling in love. This is usually where we reattach ourselves in this physical lifetime in a very conscious way to this person. I should say that this can happen at different times depending on 
what your soul intentions were and where you are along your own healing process. So for me personally, I began to fall hard in love with my twin flame just after this glimpse experience. I felt very physically, I could almost call this really the physical attachment phase. Maybe that's a better way to put it, where you really start to feel this physical conscious, not just this unconscious, there's someone out there for me, I kind of glimpsed this person, I have some kind of fantasy about a person, but a true, deep, conscious, visceral attachment to this person. You begin to just fall in love with everything about them, attach yourself to them. You feel your heart in this lifetime, literally connecting so deeply to this other soul that it begins to feel impossible to connect with anyone else. That's the kind of deep, pure, and I should say unconditional. This is when you really become aware and conscious of how unconditional your love is for this person. I remember after this glimpse I had of my twin flame, even though he was kind of my missed connection, this person that I always wondered what if, because again, we never exchanged contact information. We only found each other years later. But in the back of my mind, I always felt and thought to myself, I just hope that he's happy. I hope that he's okay. I hope that he's safe. And that is the first touch I ever had with unconditional love, with true twin flame love of truly just wanting someone to be happy, wanting someone to thrive. Of course, I didn't know I was experiencing twin flame love at the time, but I feel many of you will connect with this. This usually happens during this third stage, this attachment stage, this conscious recognition of your love and very unconditional love for this other person. Usually in this stage, I find that very often we still don't know consciously what a twin flame is. We don't know, and I'm not speaking to everyone because I know some of you find twin flame material and you just haven't met your twin flame yet. We all come to this journey from different angles, but for me personally, I still didn't know what twin flames were in this falling in love stage. However, towards the end of this stage, when I reconnected with my twin flame, in the physical many years later this is when i discovered information about twin flames i was guided to twin flame podcast on youtube so the fourth stage is what we call the fairy tale relationship although i feel like this really should be redefined because this may not look like a traditional relationship this is simply the period of time where the love feels very reciprocated in a very conscious, physical, 3D way. You are not only falling in love and attaching yourself to this person, but you feel this love reciprocated back to you. And because of this, you feel not only very intensely connected to this other soul, to your twin flame, but also connected to the divine, connected to your higher self. It's like being on cloud nine all the time, like being on this endless high of love and excitement and passion. And usually I find this is the stage where people tend to experience many of the most mystical signs and symptoms. You're connecting with this person through shared dreams. You're both becoming consciously aware of the depth of this connection. You feel within your heart and soul and everything that you are that you found your person. And you feel so settled, so sure, so energetically enthused by this person. And you just know that it's reciprocated. You don't even need to hear it said aloud just yet because you just have this inner knowing that this person returns, reciprocates this love, this intense, powerful, endless, eternal, unconditional love for you. But then of course, so during this stage, I should also connect this to this energy that I talk about so often on my channel. This is when you are playing energetic catch up. You are catching up with each other, not just on this lifetime, but every lifetime past. As you exchange all of this energy, you're remembering past lifetimes. Even if you aren't remembering them consciously, you have this sense of the depth of your connection. You also instantaneously download all of your Twin Flame's prior experiences in this lifetime, which is why as your Twin Flame shares about their childhood, their life, it's like you feel as though you were there with them. You can see it so vividly in your mind because in a sense, you always were energetically connecting with them through all of those experiences. 
you're having these telepathic experiences of just communicating in your mind with this person and it's all mystical and new and exciting but as this energy moves through you in a powerful way now it comes up against these walls against these blocks within you against these so-called chakra blocks or energy blocks these negative subconscious ideas that were unnaturally implanted in you either in this lifetime or through past life experiences that you came here to heal, to transcend. But in the moment, in real time, this healing looks very messy, very chaotic. In order for this energetic stream moving through you to break down these walls, a kind of pressure must be built up behind them just like a powerful river building pressure behind a giant concrete dam in the middle of the water. And eventually you will break through these so-called energetic dams within you, these blocks within you, but it takes time. And in the process, you feel as though everything is falling apart. You feel vulnerable often insecure, anxious, uncertain. You experience some of the more uncomfortable signs and symptoms of the twin flame connection, whether this is physical body sensations, muscular tension, feeling very fatigued and tired or having your energy levels seem to vacillate from high highs to low lows, processing all of this emotion through your heart chakra that causes you to just at times feel this love breaking you wide open and at other times feel this intense fear bringing you to your knees and during this time not only is all of this going on with you physically and energetically but your life the life you built through ego the life you built upon a false inauthentic self anything you built up based on how you wanted others to perceive you based on some kind of material goal that wasn't in alignment with your true soul purpose begins to crumble around you and it happens faster than you feel ready for it to happen usually within the twin flame connection because everything is so accelerated this path you chose such an accelerated path through this journey Usually the healing happens faster than our ego feels ready for it. The ego begins to panic. This happens on both sides and ultimately this leads to what brings us to the sixth stage, the runner chaser dynamic. Usually people vacillate between this fifth stage of ego death, of your life seeming to fall apart, of uncomfortable symptoms, of this messy, real-time chaotic healing. They vacillate between this and then this running and chasing. The runner and chaser roles can also switch places, which just adds a new layer of complication. You can feel as though you're the chaser, you're pushing so hard for this connection. Then all of a sudden you just get tired, you withdraw, and then the energy flips and the person, your twin flame who you perceive to be running away from you, can suddenly move into that chaser role. They can begin to pursue you really hard as you are pulling away or running out of fear. And on and on it goes, back and forth it goes, until finally we heal to the point where we begin to fully surrender to the truth of our connection and not just the connection as we perceive it to be in this external love relationship, but we, we surrender to our path. We surrender to our soul's highest purpose. And believe me, it's a long, messy journey. It can take a long time and it doesn't happen all at once. Sometimes we get this in flashes of knowing, flashes of security, of inner stability in spite of the storm raging around us. But even if it happens slow, it does still happen. You can trust that it is happening. It is the culmination of all of the healing that happened prior to this stage. And slowly the ego begins to die and become reborn, or I should really leave the rebirth for the next stage. The ego dies as we, as we move into our authentic self, as we allow finally everything that was out of alignment with our true soul purpose to fall away. We finally release all of those people, all of those environments, all of those jobs, all of those perceived even aspects of our personality that weren't truly us, but were just our ego expressing and manifesting itself in certain unhealthy ways. And then finally, in the eighth stage, we come together into what we call twin flame reunion. We come into, I should say, this isn't just some kind of permanent, you reach this final stage and you never heal. This journey 
involves, it necessitates perpetual growth, expansion, and healing that lasts not just a lifetime, but an eternity. However, during this final stage, you reach a point of energetic stability. You are radiating that core soul frequency enough. Your ego is dissolved enough that you can achieve a manifested physical connection, love connection with your twin flame, whatever that means for you, whether that's a traditional marriage and starting a family, whether that's a romantic relationship, a partnership, living together, a kind of physical togetherness that then provides you with the stable foundation to fulfill some kind of purpose together on the planet. This will vary radically from one person to the next. For some twin flames, this purpose could simply be to start a family, to give birth to and raise beautiful souls to become powerful creative beings just like themselves. In other cases, this could be simply to travel the world together. Sometimes people get so confused because they think that the twin flame purpose has to be some very traditionally spiritual purpose, some inherently esoteric or spiritual expression of gifts, but this could simply be living a beautiful life experience and whatever that means to you and throughout that process, it's not really about what you're doing through this purpose. It's what energy you are radiating as you do it so whether it's starting a business supporting each other in your careers traveling the world it's not what you're doing or what you're manifesting it's the energy you are putting out there into the world through your union that unconditional loving energy that is what uplifts not only you both individually and together within your connection but what uplifts the entire planet, all of planetary consciousness as a whole. So I hope this video was helpful for you in better understanding the different stages or the general pattern of the twin flame connection. If I did resonate with you, please subscribe to this channel. Join our community of like-minded, conscious, creative beings here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Instagram at magnetize yourself. Have a wonderful, 